Mm, sorry, yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. That's okay. I see you having a bit of difficulty with your connection. Yeah. Uh, mm. Sorry for that. Okay, let's uh, start again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Jane Elliott, uh, an expert on IELTS. Hello, Jane. <laughs> Hi, Noor. Yeah, I don't know if I'm quite an expert, but. <laughs> Okay, so but thank you. Q and A about uh, IELTS. Okay, Jane. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, good. Okay, the first question is about task two. How to paraphrase? Yes. Okay, the important thing to remember is not to copy the title word for word. Um, you'll lose lots of points if you do that. But you must make sure that you include all the information from the the question, the task question and make sure you make it simple and clear. Don't use too many words. Um, for example, should the question use words such as in the last 20 years, you can paraphrase that by saying in the last two decades. Um, that's just one example of how to paraphrase. Mm -hmm. How can you pack, practice paraphrasing? You can use song titles or lines from songs, lyrics from songs, and try and rewrite them um, in your own words. Ah. That makes it a fun way of practicing paraphrase. Yeah, yeah. Um, make sure that you clearly, in your um, introduction, you clearly state what you are going to be talking about in your essay mm. um, and confirm your opinion if that is asked for um, in the introduction. Yeah, okay, very nice, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, question number two. Should we put information in the introduction that is not in the question? No, absolutely not. And one of the things that you have to do when you're writing your tasks is plan, 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 plan. Mm -hmm. You must have a good plan for your essay. You plan what you're going to say in your introduction. You plan mm -hmm. your paragraphs and you plan your conclusion. And that way you will stick to plan. You cannot have any extraneous or unwanted information in your introduction or in your conclusion. And to be able to stick to that, you need to have a solid plan. Sorry, Jane. Uh, for example, if a question is asking about uh, wise decisions, about hard work, can we use, for example, a proverb just to introduce the topic, like extra information, I mean? As long as it uh, works with the, the, the question. Jane? Yep. Could you repeat I that? Said repeat that, please. <clears throat> repeat the last point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah um, can we add more information like proverbs, uh, opinions, ideas to the introduction or, to, or is it only about the question? You can, it's, you really should only have two sentences, three at the most in your introduction, mm -hmm. your paraphrase of the question and then your um, confirming how you are going to attack this question. Very good. Okay, question number Absolutely. three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, what to include in the introduction? Yeah, we are, we already answered that question. What to include in the introduction of task two? Yeah. Okay. State question. the topic mm -hmm. and what you're going to say. Okay. Question number four. What is a good paragraph? Okay. So a good paragraph is where you're going to be giving details to support your statement in the introduction. So again, I can't uh, emphasize more you must have a solid plan and you've got to stick to your plan, okay? And this is where you can um, 
this is where you now express your opinion. Um, some things to remember when you're writing your body paragraphs, less can be more. Um, okay. Make sure that you are not being too wordy. Um, Waffle. You can, don't don't uh, be afraid to keep your sentences relatively short. Yeah. Um, if you write long, um, complex, involved sentences, then your writing becomes clunky. Um, it doesn't flow nicely. Okay. So watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know what your main idea of your paragraph is going to be and put it in the first sentence so that everybody's on the same page with that. And keep your first sentence relatively short. Um, you know, keep it simple. Okay. Use the KISS principle. Good. Question number um, five. Uh, question number five. Yeah. How yeah. to write uh, an example? Okay. So, when you're writing an example, if you don't know of an example, um, you can just make one up. Mm -hmm. um, but make sure you make one up that actually fits what you need to say. Um, for example, in a, an essay about um, lots of traffic, for example, you could say, Ho Chi Minh City was designed to cope with around 500,000 cars, and now the city has over 2 million cars, resulting in cro chronic traffic problems. So this is a very good example because it's to the point mm -hmm. um, and it relates to the topic. Okay, question number six. Mm. What is the conclusion? What is a conclusion? Okay, so in the conclusion, you again only need one or two sentences. And basically what you need to do is restate what you wrote and just write what you said in your introduction um, you say, instead of saying, I'm going to, you say, I have. Okay. Two sentences at the most. Okay. Question number seven. Mm. Uh, in the conclusion, can I add my advice, my recommendation, my feeling after I have written the, the topic? Do you understand what I mean? For example, we are speaking about problems. So at the yeah. end, can I advise people don't to go to this city because it's crowded? <laughs> no <laughs> don't go down that road <laughs> um, generally if you if you start talking about something new or you're offering something different in the, in the conclusion it means that you haven't planned your essay properly mm -hmm. okay good the uh, question number eight what is a synonym mm -hmm. and, and why are some words strange I don't know what you mean by strange, but <laughs> a synonym is a word that has a similar meaning to another word. Mm -hmm. And this is something particularly with task one that you need to be able to tackle. You need lots of vocabulary for words like increased, leveled out, decreased. Um, so Okay, In let me give you this example, Jane. For example, if we have sure. like uh, 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 teenagers should study uh, all the subjects at school or they should study the subjects they like or they have interest in, okay? Mm -hmm. Can I use a synonym, a synonym for teenagers as uh, juveniles? Yes, yes, very much so, yeah. Okay. And then I think what you, what you mean by why are some words strange, you mean like some synonyms are not suitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the question. Right. Well, that that's, it comes back to vocabulary. You need to practice vocabulary. Very oh, yeah. important. Okay. This is difficult for, for um, second language speakers, is knowing which synonyms actually fit the mm -hmm. topic. Yeah. Okay, question number uh, nine. What yeah. is waffle? <laughs> Okay, so waffle is using too many words to make a point. Um, I think most of the time this uh, waffle is caused by um, a lack of vocabulary or 
I think mainly the fear of not having a high enough word count at the end. So saying the same thing over and over again instead of making a good strong point okay <clears throat> question number 10 mm -hmm. what is a collocation is it important very important and i think this is probably the most difficult thing for um esl students um collocations are words that belong together for example care about choose between aim for Again, this is a vocabulary issue and you need to practice them. Okay. Number 11, I think. When, when, can, we give, uh, when can we give our opinion in task two? You like give when, your opinion. when are we required to give our opinion? Oh, okay. So only if it's asked. Only if hmm. this, in the question it specifically says, what is your opinion? Give your opinion. Do you agree or disagree? Okay. Yeah, for the question about uh, synonyms and why are some synonyms strange? Like, mm -hmm. for example, for the word important, can we use the word cardinal? The word what? Cardinal. Cardinal. Well, if it, if it fits, this is the thing, Noor, you know, it's, mm. it's all about context. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Okay, now we are done with task two. We will go to task one. Sure. Okay. We're looking at academic task one. Yeah. Um, we're talking about the uh, um, diagrams, graphs, maps, mm. tables, process, um, yeah. etc. Good. Okay, in task one, like there are different types of tasks. Yes. Okay. Uh, when can we or when should we select? features and when should we select uh, trends or how do we know like this the main features here are trends and the main features here are uh, uh, numbers or like um, trends or something like this okay so basically when you're doing this task one you um you you would do a, a full paragraph structure so paragraph one is paraphrasing the question. So it's, it's an overview of what you're going to be writing. Paragraph two would be the main features. In paragraph two, you cover the main features of the diagram, graph, map, table, process, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you should have the general trends will then be in your two body paragraphs. You don't need a conclusion because okay, you just okay jane let, let me ask this question in another way okay okay for example if we have like um, one country and then we have numbers about this country for five years okay okay and then we have you know a line uh, for these numbers or for these percentages okay. that's one way another way is like we have also one country and then we have a bar graph okay so like uh, which in which way we can use a trend like the main trend it's you know sharply rising or we can use numbers or we can use numbers and the trends in both ways do you understand what i mean yes yes um you have to examine the whatever is represented and you've got to find the trend this oh. is the thing are oh. you going to use numbers or are you going to illustrate something else and not only that, but you've got to break that down to give you two paragraphs. So you've got to find two things to report on and compare. Good. Okay, uh, the next question. What are the main trends uh, on a map? <laughs> right, well, when you, the main normally, <laughs> normally if you have a map, there'll be two maps. So you're comparing them. Mm -hmm. um, so you would look for differences and similarities. And you would use phrases such as in the north to the west for one kilometer, um, those kind of things. Okay. <clears throat> the next question is, um, I think we have answered that. What, what are the main trends or the main features in a table? Okay, so again, you're going to be looking for things such as what is the highest figure, what is the lowest figure, mm. the second highest, second lowest, etc. Okay. Um, in your table. 
uh, what are the main features in a graph? Okay, so the main features in a graph, you would yeah. look at a way of dividing it again into two sections so that you could report on one section in one paragraph, the other section in other paragraph. Good. So you would have to see where you could divide that graph up. Okay. Great. The next is the question, Jane. Ready? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How many... <clears throat> How many paragraphs should we write for the details in task one? Two paragraphs. You've got to try and split the data into two clear sections and write two paragraphs. Okay. Another question, like it's a qu repeated, like, okay, if we are reporting some kind of information that may give us some feeling, can we report this feeling in the task? Absolutely not. You, you, your job is merely to report on or describe the data. Can, can, I, can I ask, can I, can I give an example, Jane, for example, if we are reporting about, uh, you know, like uh, unhealthy foods and so on, unhealthy food mm -hmm. like, uh, like chocolate and so on. So in the end, can we say, so it's very clear that these unhealthy foods give a lot of uh, bad things to the body, so don't eat them? No. <laughs> Definitely not. You're not okay, allowed let, to let me ask you your opinion. Uh, okay, for example, let's say we are uh, reporting a rising trend. Yeah. So in the end, for example, like can we say now we can see that uh, uh, computers have uh, controlled the world or like everybody now is using computers or give our impression of the uh, of the graphs? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, the last question for today, Jane. Like, how many times should a person write to improve the writing skill? Okay, so my recommendation to all my students um, on preparing for the written task is to write introductions. Look at the question, plan it, and write an introduction. Um, and this helps you to focus when you get into the exam. It helps you because you are looking at planning and writing introductions to many different types of essays. So when you, whatever you get in the exam, you'll be able to plan and write an introduction quickly. Once you've got your planning and your inter introduction done, the rest follows with, with ease. The week before your test, you should try and do a full test, uh, practice test every day so that you get your timing right, and you get your thinking into that whole way of writing and planning. Okay, last uh, bit of advice. The last piece of advice that I can give you is... I mean for today, not... <laughs> <laughs> this, and try and work on your vocabulary as much as possible. Yeah, okay. And submit your written uh, practice uh, practice tests to Noah, and he will have a look at them. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really can't appreciate it more, Jane. My absolute pleasure, Noah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>